Good evening. Earlier this evening, Ballymoney Borough Council debated a motion calling for road racing in Northern Ireland to be banned. The councillor who put forward the proposal is a supporter of racing, but like many others in the sport, now believes the number of lives claimed by the roads is too high. Each season, the riders take to the roads, some of them chasing thrills, others chasing a winner's prize worth just £150. Many riders have died in that chase, four this season alone. A new purpose-built circuit has been proposed as a safer alternative. Can road racing keep going? Or has it crossed the finish line? Motorcycle racing is one of Northern Ireland's biggest spectator sports, attracting tens of thousands of supporters to venues such as this here at Kirkuston on the Ards Peninsula. But racing is in crisis. Within the last 12 months, four riders have lost their lives, and the deaths have caused a split within the sport. Some believe road racing should be banned immediately. Others say the riders know the risks and should be allowed to continue. Circuits such as Kirkuston fall well short of the international standard and offer no real alternative to the road racers. So, is motorcycle racing in Northern Ireland finished, or is this the start of the race to build a new future for the sport? Two weeks ago, when the men who run the sport in Northern Ireland gather at a County Antrim hotel, this was the first of a series of meetings organised by the Motorcycle Union of Ireland, in direct response to concerns arising out of the recent deaths. It will be these men who will determine the future of motorcycle racing here. 1999 will go down probably one of the most tragic seasons that we've had in motorcycle racing in, uh, in the Ulster Centre for many years. Uh, with four fatalities, uh, which is really too many, and we have to certainly have to sit down and look at this. Is ending road racing an option? It's always, it's always an, an option, but I certainly wouldn't like to say it because it's, uh, it is exciting. It is exciting to watch, and uh, spectators will want to come and, and see it. In May, 45-year-old Donnie Robinson from Cullybacky became the first fatality of the new season. He died in hospital after hitting a roundabout during a practice session for the Northwest 200. Donnie Robinson had retired 14 years earlier but made a comeback because he missed the sport he loved so much. He was the second member of the Robinson family to lose his life to racing. His brother Neil was killed in 1986. Worse was to come. Waterford racer Tony Kerry died after crashing at the Corridor race meeting. And weeks earlier, at the Temple 100, 27-year-old painter and decorator Philip Conroy was killed. The winner of the only race run that day was Owen McNally, who vowed never to race again at the Temple unless the course was made safer. But he would never get the chance. Owen McNally lost his own life three weeks later in a 130 mile an hour crash at the Ulster Grand Prix. He was one of Northern Ireland's most popular riders, a rider with a promising future. The death of the 30 year old Coleraine man, so widely respected for being so highly safety conscious, caused a deep sense of hurt within the motorcycling fraternity, which is still felt today. Owen was, was, uh, he was a brilliant lad, he was. I, know, I, I knew him from he was struggling at the club races and gathering up bits and I had, had uh, lots of parts of old Yamahas which Owen would have come many a weekend before a race and uh, got them and put them in the way. He, he, he was a brilliant fella, uh, a, lo a lovely family man. I, I was at his wedding and uh, the whole McAnally family were, were very nice people and he says a terrible loss to motorcycle sport in Northern Ireland because he was one of those riders who could uh, go out on a road circuit, he could win, and uh, he could go out in the short circuit and he could compete with the best there as well. And it was very, very untimely his death because I felt that Owen was one of the riders who could probably went on and, and won British championships in, in, in the mainland. The only other place in the world which still allows road racing is the Isle of Man, the mecca for all road racers for close to 100 years. The famous TT races are run there each summer, attracting the top riders from Northern Ireland. But each summer also sees an almost inevitable cull of riders. Eleven lost their lives there this year alone. Classic road races held in Ulster each year are the Northwest 200 and the Ulster Grand Prix at Dundraud. The other races are held on what are called national circuits, 
which is just another term for closed public roads. These circuits in particular are giving the most concern and are facing growing calls for them to be banned. Billy Nutt has been involved in local road racing for 30 years and is the promoter of the North West 200 and other top races. He says it's time for the racing authorities to take action before the government does. There's always a possibility that it could be banned and that's where it's up to the MCUA Ulster Centre, which include ourselves, to get our act together uh, so that people don't uh, Get, or we don't get ourselves into a position where the powers that be can, will say, look, that's enough. I think we have to be seen to be responsible. Uh, we have to show uh, that we have a plan to improve these road races and, and to try and bring them uh, up to date where the uh, level of safety will be acceptable. There will always be accidents in the, uh, and I think it, it would be unrealistic to think that there would be uh, deaths uh, in motorcycle racing, as in any sport. I mean, if you look at horse racing and any of the other sports, there is death, unfortunately. In everyday life, uh, it happens. But, but you know, we're concerned about motorcycle, and we're going to have to try and cut that to the limit. Uh, my uh, own opinion, uh, and I would think it's fair to say the Korean club's opinion, is that some of the smaller national circuits are uh, long past their sell-by date, uh, and I think it's time uh, changes were made. Uh, either to the circuits or move them to other circuits or something because uh, we just have to move. We haven't moved with the times and unfortunately we've been left behind. Billy Nutt has witnessed at first hand the dangers of road racing. So much so that when his son Marty wanted to take up the sport, he advised him against it. Marty followed his father's advice and like a growing number of young riders from here, now races on English circuits. Why did you not go into road racing? Uh, to be honest, just too many people were dead against me doing them. I personally wouldn't have, I would quite enjoy doing the roads, I think. Uh, but it just it would uh, annoy too many people and i just would rather keep them on my side. Your friends and family basically didn't yeah, want you to do it. Yeah, that's it. What about yourself looking at the road racing situation now in Northern Ireland? Do you think that it's coming to an end? Yeah, I do. Uh, I don't know, it's bad run of it this year, you know, which is maybe unfortunate, but I think it's been good in a way that it's made people sit up and take notice because it just, to me the roads can't go on like that there and as long as the roads are going on it's going to hold back the short circuits which is obviously what I would like to see coming through. Marty Nutt would like to see our short circuit tracks at Nutt's Corner, Bishop's Court, Akadui or this one at Kirkiston properly developed. Kirkiston is acknowledged as the riders favourite but its owners admit they need millions of pounds they don't have just to begin bringing it up to international standard. Road racers generally don't like purpose-built circuits. That's why they stick to the roads. If you're not a road racer over here, you don't really count. So that means then the circuits sort of get overlooked. But if, this, if the roads were starting to die out slightly, which I honestly think they are starting to die out, uh, it'll all help the circuits and get more money put into the circuits. This is Northern Holland. An end-of-season meeting on the world-famous Assen circuit has attracted riders from all over Europe, including several from Northern Ireland. But even here, Joey Dunlop gets top billing. In this part of the world, the Northern Ireland riders, especially the Dunlop brothers, are both seen and treated as heroes. But the governors of the sport here in Holland say they came to the conclusion a long time ago that road racing had no future. They believe circuits are the way forward, and they think Northern Ireland should get on track. If the question is what is the future of road racing in Northern Ireland, then this is the answer. Road races were held here before this circuit was developed and the essential ingredients for road racing remain. But the trees, telegraph poles and bridges have been taken away. Ferry Brewer, who sponsors many of Northern Ireland's riders, is one of the organisers of this weekend's racing. It's holy ground we're standing on. This is a real motorcycle circuit. It is very, very important to Dutch motorcycle racing. We can't imagine what racing would be like without this circuit. David Wood is here at Assen in his role as manager of some of Northern Ireland's best young riders. A former rider himself, he's one of the father figures in the sport. He's a die-hard road racer who says Assen is a world away from what he and the riders are used to at home. All the riders I have here this weekend have other jobs. 
They are motor mechanics, they are steel erectors, they are electricians, they are publicans. Uh, they, they, they do all their jobs and they race the weekends and work at their bikes during the night because no, the road racing end of things doesn't throw up a lucrative living that you could lie on your back and have a medallion on your chest and enjoy. Uh, but they're doing it for the sheer buzz and excitement and thrill of it all. If the clerk of the course here on Sunday will ask to the riders or will tell them, you know, that out of the 400 who will participate, only 398 will survive and ask the question, how many of you guys will start, then 400 will start. I think that, that I have been taken around a few of your circus in Northern Ireland by Davy Wood and I'm a road race fanatic. But there were one or two places where I said, well, Davy, I'm, I'm really sorry, you know, you have to close the gates here. This is too dangerous, you know, e even to my standard. Joey Dunlop is one of the most successful sportsmen Northern Ireland has ever produced. He's a former world champion who has won everything there is to win on roads, short circuits and Grand Prix. He's dominated the sport for 20 years and is still riding at the top level. I think Joey is, is, is similar as Carl Fogarty. You know, they don't move to Monaco. They don't wear Armani suits. They remain the people who they are. And let's face it, motorcycle racing is not for the upper class nothing wrong about the upper class don't get me wrong but the thing is that motorcycle people are diehards you know they don't appear here in their mercedeses and all these things so they want to touch their guys they want to talk to them you know they speak the same language and that's i think is the the success of carl fogarty and the success of the likes of joey dunlop they remained who they are joey dunlop knows all about the highs and lows of his sport he says it's now time to take stock He's raced and won at Assen before, and now wants Northern Ireland to build a similar circuit. This is actually a public road track, but all the ditches is all taken away and it's all fixed up for racing it. That's what Northern Ireland needs, but it's difficult with the public roads, as you know yourself. Like, but this was a public road. I remember racing here when the minute, five minutes after the last race, the cars started driving away again. But they did so much work to it, and, and there's... Like it's, that's what I would call one of the, the safest short circuit roads in the world. Like. Why do you think that you, we should have one of these uh, tracks in Northern Ireland? I think it would help. You know, it would bring a lot of other people into it because at the moment we have so many people doing short circuits and then so many people doing road races and, and there ain't a place to gas in between. It's a short circuit and a road race. You know, the only thing that's safe, it's a road race only that's safe and, and that's why a lot of short circuit people doesn't go to roads because they think they're too dangerous. Joey's younger brother Robert is also in Assen and is another of the fans' favourites. Robert has cheated death on more than one occasion. A uh, risk that we uh, that we accept, you know, uh, and it's a cruel sport from that point of view. It's cruel, you know. Uh, but it's what we, I mean, I don't know what Joey would do or I would do if we weren't racing motorcycles. Obviously, road racing is dangerous. I mean, motorcycle racing is dangerous. Uh, uh, I, I think something, I'm not sure what now, but... I mean, you see, the problem is, back home, <coughs> that when somebody gets injured, or seriously injured, or fatally injured, uh, which unfortunately does happen sometimes, and this year has been a very bad year, uh, everybody always looks at why, why it happened. You don't they don't seem to be able to comprehend that riders sometimes make mistakes and fall off, you know, through their own misjudgment or something. They always look for, to blame something or somebody. Robert is critical of the present national circuits in Northern Ireland. He supports building a new circuit, but says the sport needs a complete shake-up first. We need to change the fundamental things that hold our racing back at home. And that is starting with the uh, governing body needs to be changed. Uh, they need to adapt a more professional attitude rather than the way they do it now, you know, which is <laughs> laughable. David Wood has brought one of his most promising young riders to Holland. And a skill and man, Richard Britton, is now making a name for himself in the sport. We should have a, a big proper circuit that you can get all the big guys over or have world super big rounds at it and stuff like that there but um, we, d we should have one yes um, but uh, as far as road racing concerned road racers will be road racers 
that want to race between the hedges. We get a buzz out of that. And uh, I wouldn't like to see road racing disappear. Richard's sponsor is Alan Gregg, who this year spent £25,000 keeping his rider on the road. Sponsors have come onto the spotlight recently because of the announcement from PJ O'Kane Racing, one of the most prominent backers in the sport, that his riders were to quit racing on roads because of this year's deaths. I think the number of deaths obviously concern everyone. I mean, it's, it's, I believe that you'll never ever stop a guy riding a motorcycle on the road. I mean, I know my rider, Richard Britton, for example, told me years ago that he stopped riding road bikes because he said, I was a lunatic on the road, so I decided I wanted to do it when the roads were closed, when I knew there was nothing coming the other way. But likewise, I mean, there are, there are accidents on, on tracks as well as roads, and unfortunately, some of these lads pay the ultimate price for their sport. At Assen, the runoff areas and other safety features mean very few riders ever have to pay the ultimate price for their sport. But such luxuries are not available on public roads. A man whose life has recently been saved by the runoff is Jeremy McWilliams. Home in Belfast during a break in the Formula One Grand Prix season, he had a horrific fall recently in Australia, but walked away. He refused to ever race on roads here and believes it's now time to stop the sport. This year I've lost a few friends at it again, and as last year, and uh, my, um, I suppose my view on it remains the same, that it should be, it should be stopped. Uh, this island uh, tend to hold it as their little niche market of, uh, you know, we, we hold road racing dear to our heart, and you've got the hardcore road race fraternity that, that, that believe it's the be all and end all, and, you know, fair enough, if that's what they want, you know, they're going to keep getting it here until somebody steps in and stops it. The owners of the Bishop's Court circuit near Downpatrick say they have been taking Jeremy McWilliams' advice on how to develop their venue. Many of those looking for a new circuit believe it should be in the northwest. But the owners of Bishop's Court say all attempts to upgrade their circuit since they bought it eight years ago have been met with opposition from the road racing hierarchy. It took a fair bit of stick. I don't know why. John and myself were motorcycle people before we started here, and we thought we'd have got a lot of help, but that just never was forthcoming, you know. I don't know why. I just can't understand it. Road racing is going to stop. There's no doubt about it. Everybody knows that sooner or later it's going to have to stop. You just can't keep on the way. They're going on. It's going to end up with places like this. All we're doing is looking to the future. A close friend of Owen McNally has also been looking to the future. Bill Kennedy was a road racer himself and lost his brother Frank to the sport. He put a motion to Ballymoney Council earlier this evening proposing the ending of road racing and the building of a new circuit. I would propose that uh, the, the road racing, the national road racing, was phased out over a period of five years. And at the same time, uh, I would I'd be looking for the support of all 26 district councils and ask them to, to come in behind this, this uh, project and support it by contributing one penny and the rate over five years and have a, a, properly, a proper national course uh, with all the, the amenities, everything that's required, proper course, nothing left out, no shortcuts taken. Is this the most important review that the sport has ever had? Oh, I think it, I think it will be, yes. And I think this will uh, pave the way forward for a, a, a new look at road racing and we hope that will have a safer and better sport. I don't think there is a future for road racing in the, in the way that it is at the moment. This place needs a short circuit, a proper short circuit. It's a travesty that all you have is somewhere like Kirkiston. You know, great racing on an absolute dump of a track. I mean, it's got moss growing out through the tarmac, for God's sake. We had a bad year, but I don't think it'll stop it now. Like, I think we'll have to look at it and maybe a couple of the, maybe the more practice and, and maybe more less racing you know, I think at the moment we have too many classes trying to put them all in together and everybody's too big a panic. You know, we simple things that I think we can, we're talking about going through the whole system and, and trying to help. You know, it's just one of the things we have to try and sit down and work out.